To the left of the steering column, this is a fuse box cover, so that's not a pocket or anything. You can open up the power lift gate here. An electronic parking brake is engaged here. Dimmer switch for the interior gauges is also here. And then this is the traction control. Default is on. You can turn it off here if you need to spin tires for whatever reason. Downhill descent control is here as well. Has a tilt, telescoping steering column that you lock in place right here. It's really easy to get to. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall. And I have the driver's seat all the way down and all the way back to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. Uh, so it is a little bit too far back for me. I would have to pull it up slightly in order to drive safely. So if you're a little bit over six feet tall, shouldn't have a problem driving this vehicle. So the steering wheel, uh, it has like this little bit of a bump right in here. It's not a flat bottom, but it kind of widens the bottom, kind of like a grip, similar to the top, but it's on the outside. Kind of gives it a unique look. Feels comfortable and it does give in a hand. It's not super hard as a rock. Uh, and the thickness is nice. Now the thickness varies depending on where you hold it, but but overall it's a, it's a nice looking steering wheel. Now this one does have the pedal shifters, so you can shift through the eight gear ratios. To the left of the steering column is the cruise control settings. So you can turn them on, turn the cruise control on here, set, you can adjust the speed up and down, and then you can resume and cancel by pressing in on that little toggle switch. You can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using this button, and this is to toggle on and off the uh, lane keep assist system. Now this pages button and this OK and this, this scroll wheel right here corresponds with the screen. We'll get to that in a second. Here on the right side is the volume for the radio. You can also press it in for mute up and down this is for changing the radio tracks or this whatever tracks you're playing and then you have the voice recognition mode is the audio source you can cycle through the different audio sources and then there's the phone button for answering and hanging up the same button windshield wiper controls are here on the right side and that's for the front and the back turn signal indicators here but it also has the headlight switch as well uh, so you have off automatic parking lights and headlights there and I like the way it pulls up here and kind of shows you what you're doing. So that way you don't have to necessarily look at this. To the left of the screen, which is your gauges, is this little kind of fabric cover right here. And basically, uh, this is just for looks, but also it is metal, so you can put magnets on it and stuff, kind of customize your, your vehicle. The gauge cluster is basically all just a dig digital screen, and it gives you relevant information your speed, digital speedometer, uh, fuel gauge here as well, and then you have your tachometer, RPM gauge, and the engine coolant temperature, outside temperature, what gear you're in, uh, what the last speed line, limit sign was, status of the lane keep assist, and then right now it's showing this uh, drive information there in the center. Uh, but remember these buttons here, the pages and the scroll wheel, we can change that. We can. When you hit the pages button, you'll see that it's part of a menu system, a three-part menu system. The front, first, second page, and third page. The first page, you can also scroll up and down and get additional information. You can see those little status dots there on the side showing you that there's more information. This is, this is your, your all-wheel drive, how much energy is going to each wheel there. Then go to the next page is just the uh, the digital compass basically and the next one is this is more for your safety systems uh, so this is the status of your adaptive cruise control your lane keep assist system and whether there's a vehicle in front of you and and all that stuff it's going to show you as you drive but right now it's not going to show anything because i'm not doing anything in the settings over here we can change the look of this screen as well uh, so it has style a style b and style c and then we have gauge style, classic, or simple. Classic style A, classic style B, classic style C. So that'd be like a sport type. So you can do some a little bit of customizations there as far as the way the screen looks. Uh, and you do that on this touch screen. Okay, so the touch screen, go ahead and hit this home button here. So you can see it's kind of a split. Uh, between a different tile. So this is the navigation map, this is what your radio is doing, and then you have your phone over here. You can go over here, we have some large tiles that we can select, really easy to identify and read and everything. 
phone projection will be your uh, your Apple CarPlay Android Auto. Voice memo, this is pretty cool. You just hit that and you can just start talking and, and record a, a, a memo. Where you're Let's say you're driving and you come up with a genius idea. You can take a note of it so you don't forget. Uh, check the weather. You have valet mode. Um, Hyundai car pay, which is pretty interesting. And then you have your setup options here. Uh, vehicle diagnostics. Let's hit that so you can see what it looks like. Takes a second to, to pull up, I suppose. All right, so we can't retrieve data right now. I guess it's not set up for an owner yet, I suppose. All right, HD radio, uh, notifications will go here. Online manual, this is, is just a QR code. <laughs> I wish it was like had more information here on the screen. All right, so let's look at the setup here. You have all these different options here. Uh, vehicle navigation, sound, and all that stuff. This is where I went to the cluster and did the adjustments there. So let's look at the navigation map. You can do searches here if you want. You can also save different locations as well and you're under save places. Let's look at the radio screen. You can see your presets, favorites. You have AM, FM. Uh, and then of course you have the Bluetooth, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, also you can plug in devices to the USB, play off of that, but right now it's just showing what's available because we don't have any of that uh, set up yet. And then your phone, once you pair your phone, you have access uh, to phone book and all that stuff. So you can send and receive calls. Also, you can respond to text messages without taking your hands off the wheel using the voice recognition system. And I like the way it has the digital clock there that is always there. It's always in that location so you know where your eyes can go to look at the time. Uh, you can also set up different drivers here, uh, so you have different profiles. So you can set up, and this will save your, so like your presets for the radio or, or any kind of specific user settings that will show up in your, uh, in those driver settings. So that helps out a lot, especially when two people are driving the vehicle and they have completely different preferences. Okay, so there is a physical volume knob tuned through the stations, and then you have some physical buttons down here uh, for different uh, quick access links to the, the touch screen there. Climate control is just below, and then you have the uh, little screen here showing you the temperature, the status of the, where you want the fan speed, where you want the air to blow, and all that stuff. Now it does have an automatic function that's three stage, high, medium, and low. Uh, so that's handy um, if you want to have, you know, it to take over but you don't want a full blast so you can lower it down if you want to front rear defrosters is here as well and then you can recirculate the air or you can have fresh air all right so down here is the usb charge port as well as uh, connecting to the usb system as well there's a 12 volt power supply and then there's a little storage cubby but it's also a wireless charge pad as well so you can put your cell phone there charge it if it's small enough to fit in there. It's pretty good size though, this area. And it's rubberized so it doesn't slide around on you. Uh, this is where you'll find the the heated and cooled seats here for the driver and then the passenger. There's also a heated steering wheel and it's a two stage, high and low. And then the cooled and heated seats are three stage, high, medium, and low. Uh, this is where you can turn on the park, the, the camera system, which is fantastic. Uh, so there's two ways of doing it. One is just to press this. Let's say we're just sitting here. We don't want to put it in gear. We can press that button and we can, let's go ahead and push that. Um, so, so this button, when you're just sitting still, it's going to show the camera system front and the, the top down view, which looks really good. It really helps out see around the vehicle. Uh, so we can press that. We can get the different views here on the front next to the wheels or the full wide view in the front. We can also get the back view and then different views there in the back. We can get a 360 view of around the vehicle and we can kind of move it around, look around. And of course the vehicle itself is not the, it's just a like a rendered version, but it is the area around the vehicle is actually really there. All right, so now that's just when you have 
when you're sitting still and then you push the button. Um, but, i go ahead and make that go away. There's another way uh, to see the camera and that is when you put it in reverse. So here's the shifter here. And basically you just turn this back like that. Now we're in reverse. The parking sensors are active here and then we have basically the same thing except for it's more focused on the back instead of the front. Uh, full camera system, parking sensors, all that's active. Put it in park, we just press this. If we want to put it in drive, we go like this. Now we're in drive, but you notice the camera doesn't pop up. Now if it detects something with the parking sensors, it will pop up here in the front. Or you can press the button here. Now, so now we're in drive, press the button, it shows the top down and also the vehicle here, depending on what we have selected here on the side. But we can go a, we can go slowly uh, and we can see around what's going on when we're going forward. So this is really handy for park, parking tightly or going through tight spaces or just, just clear, just parking and you want to really nail the parking spot or whatever. Um, it is pretty handy and you can always change the different views if you want to. So you can access this camera reverse, forward, or sitting still without it just being in park. This is an all-wheel drive vehicle. Um, it is handy to have a drive mode here. Uh, you can also lock a center differential so that way you get a little bit more uh, to the all-wheel drive system uh, by pressing here. But if we turn this knob, it's a rubberized knob, and basically we have a snow, normal, and sport. Uh, so now if you just have it in normal mode, it is going to be capable of you know detecting slippage and all that stuff. Uh, but the snow really helps out with you know not having any jerky motion or anything like that. It kind of gives you that you know slow easy acceleration without you know causing a slippage um, and then it has the sport mode just for basically you know higher revs and give you stay in that power band for the engine and, and get a little, little bit of more control of your acceleration and stuff like that uh, but normal mode is fantastic it's fine for everyday driving normal is great all right, so here's some cup holders, um, and you notice the space right in here uh, is flat. So you can utilize this space really good, but you, let's say you don't have a cup or a bottle or anything, you can move these out of the way and have additional space here. You can move this one in, They're kind of spring-loaded, so if you want to pop them out, you just press that button, set the cup down. Real easy to, to uh, initiate the cup holder, basically. Um, but yeah, this whole area right here, you can utilize it for anything. You can stand up your cell phone, it has a little lip right here if you want to use that for that. Uh, this little divider pops out because this area is in, it connects in with this center area. So this armrest, kind of rubbery soft, kind of small, but it does get, it, get out of the way so you can access this little storage quick access tray. And then you have a quick access uh, little area right here as well. Now the divider moving removing the divider probably not the best idea if you're if you want to keep this junky uh, you have a bunch of junk in here because it will slide around this is a smooth plastic so the divider having keeping it there is pretty good um, for most most people like myself they like to have a like a junk drawer type area and then you have the quick access area the separated for the junk area junk area and then you have this to cover that up. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, kind of a little bit of versatile uh, air storage area here in the center of this quick access, uh, just like over there, quick access. Really like that. Rear view mirror is auto dimming. It's an auto dimming rear view mirror. It's actually auto dimming now because they have this shade uh, over the light sensor, which is located here on the back of this right here. And then it has the home link garage door printer controls. So the lights, there's a quick reading lights here here you can turn on all the interior lights there have them all off or have them turn on with the door in that center position there you also also have roadside assistance button here as well uh, with the blue link uh, so this button controls the center we'll get to that in a second the visor has like a vinyl type wrapping that matches the cloth headliner and there's a clip here big mirror and there's a light that turns on manually so you can turn it on if you want it and if you accidentally leave it on when you lift this up it hits it and turns it off. Pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, basically, pretty basic visor. Now it does extend out as well. 
But the thing about extending out with a lot of these vehicles is they extend out. This one actually does go all the way to the end. Uh, but some of them extend out to like right there so that you know where the sun's gonna be right there in your face. Visor's was about the same on the other side. Okay, so the sunroof control. Let's look at the sunroof. Uh, it has a shade that covers 100% of the light and we press gently back on that button and we can just open up the shade, let some light in, press a little bit more and it moves it back. All right, press it again, nothing happens. That's as far back as it goes here. So if you press it firmly, it's gonna move that forward and then it's going to close the, the shade there. But if you press it gently, it'll just close the glass. So it depends, it's pressure sensitive here. Now, if you want to tilt it, um, you can, when the shade's open, you just press up like that and just tilt it up. Press it up again to tilt it back down. Looking at the visibility here in the back, uh, you can see the pillars are quite wide. It does have a little glass, a little window there, but um, overall it's something you will need to get used to, those pillars there. Uh, but other than that, it's not too bad. It does have a pillar there, and just overall, it depend on, depends on passengers and all that stuff and headrests. Uh, but not, a, not too bad, not overly bad. Now, it does have the rear cross traffic alert, blind spot detection system, parking sensors, 360 camera, uh, all kinds of technology to help out with driving a vehicle safely. So it's not really an issue at all. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to Parkway Hyundai here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I'll see you guys next time.